NASA and the European Space Agency will work with scientists from RMIT and the private company Human Aerospace to make three types of spacesuits. The development is being paid for by the Australian Space Agency, which is giving $844,000. The money will be used to make two prototype compression suits and one concept design. Is this where space travel is going? This and much more in today's video. Kicking us off, Human Aerospace designing next-gen spacesuits. Human Aerospace was one of 10 companies that won grants from the Australian Space Agency agency's Expand Capability Grant earlier this year. The grants were worth a total of $11 million. The South Australian company has said it will use the $844,000 grant to work with NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology to design and test the next generation of spacesuits. The goal and design of these special suits is to help astronauts deal with some of the side effects of not having weight that they often feel during and after their time in space. The company has said that two of the suits will be made as advanced advanced prototypes, and one will be made as a concept design. This will put Australia at the forefront of compression spacesuit technology around the world. Professor Rajiv Patti, who is in charge of RMIT Center for Materials Innovation and Future Fashion, was excited for his team to help design and test this technology at their cutting-edge facility. Patti said, This is an exciting chance to show our cross-disciplinary teamwork in design and technology and to work with the best in the world to make suits that will really help people's health. The effects of space on the human body. When astronauts are in space, they don't have any weight on their bodies. This is very hard on the body. Astronauts can grow up to 7 centimeters taller in space because their spines lengthen in the new environments. This can cause pain during their mission and a higher risk of slipped disc when they come back to Earth. Studies have shown also that astronauts lose up to 2% of their bone mass and up to 2% of their muscle mass every month they are in space. Human Aerospace is making a skin suit that can counteract these effects and keep astronauts safe and comfortable during their mission. Human Aerospace Director and Chief Engineer Dr. James Waldy talked about how important it is to design spacesuits. Bone loss is a big problem. It's like a really bad case of osteoporosis, he said. Your hip bones could age by 50 years during a Mars mission. Astronauts have traditionally tried to lessen this effect by using exercise machines for about two hours a day, but to do this, you need big, heavy equipment that can't be used on long-term missions. With the skin suits from Human Aerospace, you wouldn't have to work out so hard. Dr. Waldy said, we're making a prototype of a suit that will keep them in shape just by wearing it. It is very light, flexible, and doesn't need power. When it is in use, astronauts can keep working, so it is good for long missions. The human aerospace skin suits would prevent health problems caused by weightlessness, like bone and muscle loss, by giving the torso and lower body a load similar to what it would be on Earth. In practice, this means that the elastic suit would apply a compression force along the direction of the spine. This would keep the spine from getting longer when there is no gravity and mimic what happens when there is gravity. Is this another suit for the moon or even Mars? The team is also making an advanced skin suit concept that will be worn on spacewalks, walks on the moon, and maybe even walks on Mars. The current gas pressurized suits for spacewalks are amazing personal spaceships, but they are also big, heavy, stiff, dangerous, and need a lot of upkeep, Waldy said. New designs and improvements are also important in this area, and we think that gas pressurized layers in spacesuits could be replaced by or added to layers made of elastic skin suits. The idea of using skin suits for spacewalks has been around since the 1960s. Since 2001, when he started his PhD at RMIT University, Waldy has focused on researching how they are made. The main problem is getting the elastics to work so we can control the pressure and make it easy to put them on and take them off. He says, we will work with our U.S. partners to find new ways to do this activation and make skin suits a possible option in the future. This will make spacesuits lighter, safer, and easier to move in. The third suit that the team is working on is less of a spacesuit and more of an Earth suit. When astronauts come back to Earth after a mission, they face another problem. When astronauts are in a weightless environment, the blood pressure in every part of their bodies evens out. However, this changes when they go back to Earth's gravity. Astronauts can get a condition called orthostatic intolerance from this change. Human Aerospace wants to solve this problem with a new skin suit that will be made into a prototype with the help of their new grant. The team will make an advanced prototype of a compression suit for astronauts to wear when they come back to Earth. This suit will help prevent blood from pooling, just like G-suits do for pilots.
astronauts. This kind of technology isn't just about helping the health and safety of astronauts. It's also about making medical technologies that can help treat burns, lymphedema, and peripheral vascular disease in the rest of the population, he said. Moving on, despite all odds, Mars robot refuses to die. Insight is still going strong, even though its own end date has come and gone. The famous Mars robot was expected to shut down in late summer because dust had started to build up on its solar panels, making it hard for them to charge up fully. At the time, NASA made a point of saying that its mission, which started in 2018, was a big success. Over the past few years, InSight has sent back daily weather reports, recorded more than 1,300 extraterrestrial earthquakes, found Mars's large liquid core, and helped scientists map the planet's inner geology. But it's still not done. Scientists want InSight to keep recording quakes for as long as possible. But a big dust storm is giving the robot a hard time at the moment. The storm was first seen late in September, about 2,175 miles from InSight. It didn't have much of an effect on the robot, but in the weeks since then, the storm has grown bigger, adding 40% more dust to the air around InSight. This makes it even harder for its solar panels to get enough light. NASA says that InSight's energy has dropped from 425 watt-hours per Martian day, Sol, to just 275 watt-hours per Sol. Scientists have decided to turn off InSight's seismometer for two weeks while it waits out this dust storm in order to save its valuable energy. During this time, the robot won't be able to keep recording Mars quakes, but the people who run it hope that this will give it more energy than just for the next few weeks. Finally, James Webb Telescope captures detailed new images of stars being born in Tarantula Nebula. NASA has released two amazing new pictures of the Tarantula Nebula that were taken by the James Webb Telescope. These pictures show a nearby part of the universe that could help astronomers learn more about how stars are made. The Tarantula Nebula, also known as 30 Doradus, is in the large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy, which is only 161,000 light years from Earth and is part of the group of galaxies closest to the Milky Way. It is also called the Spider Nebula. When pictures of the nebula were taken in the past, it looked like long clouds of dust and gas were coming out of its center like a spider's web. But the new pictures, which were taken with the James Webb Telescope's infrared sensors, show a more complex and detailed picture of what is going on at the center of the nebula, where stars are being made at a very fast rate. The first picture, which was taken from the telescope's near-infrared camera, NIR cam, is 340 light-years wide and shows a group of massive stars making room for themselves at the center of the nebula by destroying the matter around them with blistering radiation, as NASA put it. Smaller points of light that can be seen in the gas and dust clouds are protostars. These are young stars that are still gaining mass as they move out of the web of the nebula and into its center. Nobody has ever taken a picture of a protostar because the matter around it is too dense for visible light to pass through. The region looks very different in a second image released by NASA. It was taken with the telescope's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, which makes the cooler gas and dust glow blue, while the hot stars fade into the background. Astronomers are especially interested in the Tarantula Nebula because its chemical makeup and behavior are similar to what would have happened in parts of the early universe when star formation was at its peak. This time is called Cosmic Noon for the Universe. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time, cheers!